we are moving to the last, last, very last session of this wonderful fair with the presentation of the PharmaPack Award winners. We will have successively all the winners that will present in not more than 10 minutes, so we will see uh, their product. And uh, I should be sure that we will understand what why we are, they are winning this, this year. So the first one will be <coughs> the Passion Centric Design Award winner, and it's Rachel Mishra for the Abbott Healthcare and these very nice uh, crayon devices. Good evening, everyone. Um, okay, so uh, pancreatic uh, anxiocrine insufficiency is a disease where you know the patient unable to uh, release uh, uh, sufficient enzymes from the pancreas, so it won't be able to you know digest the food properly. So that is where the creon comes in picture. So creon granules are enteric coated granules. They act directly in the intestine, help in breaking down the protein, carbohydrate, and help the patient to <coughs> digest uh, uh, the food. So what happens in creons is, creons comes in a different uh, uh, SKUs, different capsule size. It comes in 10,000, 20,000, and 40,000 IU. So the patient uh, uh, has to... Uh, I mean, in the, the creons is prescribed as for the individual requirement. So patient has to take uh, uh, different SKUs at different times of the day. For example, you know, 10,000 IU in the morning, 20,000 IU in the afternoon, or 40,000 IU in the evening. So he has to keep all these SKUs at his end to maintain the <coughs> dose titration uh, you know, properly. So that's the one point, you know, you have to keep all the strips the capsule strips at your end, 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, and that's the issue. And also, in case of pediatric and geriatric patient, it has the, they, they used to open up the capsule, sprinkle on the food, and then consume. So, you know, that's the second problem statement we walk out. So these two are the major issue when we actually interact with the patient or the physician for that matter, and then walk out on them. So this all insight started with this thing. It was it taken roughly around two to three years to come up with a device. And, <coughs> you know, that's how uh, the Creon uh, uh, granule dosing device is. Okay, what it does, so it gives a meter dose of granules. One push is equivalent to 250 milligram of pancreatic uh, mini microspheres. And uh, each actuation is equivalent to one capsule, which is 10,000 IUs. And it's, it's, it's actually flexible and you know easy to carry for the patient while on move. And uh, <coughs> it is, uh, it can be, uh, you know, directly gi uh, be given along with the food or, you know, there's no issue with respect to that. Now, I mean, uh, then the, the portability also is one of the f f factor that, you know, it uh, it can be uh, can be easy to, uh, is to to take uh, by the patient. While on, that's, that's the point that has come up. So when the patient on travel, they have to carry, a, use, usually carry a big box of, you know, different SKUs and all that. So that's all factor that has been properly worked out in this uh, uh, device. I'm going to take you through so it's a very simple and easy to use. Uh, I mean, this, there is only five steps. You just have to open up the cap, lift the slider, and then push one push is equivalent to 10,000 IU, which is equivalent to one capsules. So depending on the requirement, the physician then guide the patients. You have to take how many push instead of uh, which uh, capsules, you know, 10,000 in the morning, 20,000 in the afternoon. There's a lot of confusion. You just have to uh, give one push, one capsules, two push, two capsule, four push, four capsule. So it's so convenient for the patient to take uh, the medication. So I'm going to play a video.
puts patients at ease and is convenient to use with five simple steps post unboxing GDOCon. Take out crayon, SD assembly from the pouch. Keep the pouch safely for further usage. Silica gel provided in the pouch, not for consumption. Step 1. Now open the top cap of crayon SD assembly. Step 2. Lift the slider upside so that the knob comes out. Step 3. Turn the bottle upside down and shake the bottle slightly. Make sure the transparent chamber is filled with crayon. Step 4. Push the knob inside. Hold the knob for a second and then release. Step 5. One dose. Approx 250 mg of pancreating mini microspheres equivalent to 10,000 IU of lipase will come out. Add the crayon granules to your meals as suggested by physician. The dose may be mixed with a small amount of thickened acidic liquid or baby food like full fat yogurt, fruit juice, apple sauce, pH less than 4.5. This is imperative to maintain pellet integrity and to prevent sticking or clumping of the pellets. In case of emergency, an acidic liquid or food is not available. Alternatively, the pellets can be dispersed into water, non-carbonated or non-fizzy. Stir gently to suspend the pellets evenly through the water. After ingesting, visually examine the cup or glass for any remaining pellets. Any mixture of the pancreating mini microspheres with food or liquid, inclusive water, should be swallowed immediately without crushing or chewing and should not be stored. Mixing with non-acidic food or liquid, pH level more than 5.5. Crushing or chewing of the pellets may cause irritation in your mouth or change the way crayon SD works in your body. Care should be taken to ensure that no product is retained in the mouth. For the next dose, again, upright the bottle. Invert the bottle and push the knob for a second dosage. Take the number of doses advised by the physician. Then put on the cap and keep safe in the pouch. Repeat the steps for the next dosage. Indeed. An innovation that will truly change our perspective towards right dosing of pancreating mini microspheres. Offer patients the goodness of Crayon Smart Dose, pancreating mini microspheres smart dosing device. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> if you have any question, you know I can answer. Do we have some time? One minute, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> little longer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, next presentation it's Boehringer Engelheim. Yeah, people are here to present. Simon. Hello, everybody. So I brought the award with me. We received yesterday. So we received the Eco Design Award for the recipe Mart Reusable. I just place it here. And I'm very grateful and, and happy to be here. And I'm very proud and want to thank you, the entire recipe Mart team, for this innovation and that they make that happen, this innovation for the patients and the environment. Yeah, my name is Simone Schulz. I'm the managing director of Böhringer Ingelheim Microparts, located in Dortmund, uh, where the recipe Mar device is manufactured and where the life cycle of the recipe Mar platform is done. 
Yeah, and I would like to present the recipe mart reusable, and also I brought with me a short video. In a world where oceans are filled with plastics, and where climate change effects become more and more visible, we are all aware of the importance of waste reduction and sustainable technologies to preserve our planet for future generations. At Beringer Ingelheim, taking responsibility for nature and the climate goes without saying. At the same time, this generates greater efficiency and innovative products. For example, most inhalers are used for one month, and then we throw them away. Such a waste. Beringer Ingelheim deepens commitment to the environment with a push towards green devices which can be refilled. This is how one year of inhaler use can look for one patient. For two patients. Four. There are 251 million COPD patients worldwide. Can you imagine how big the change could be if each of them would use refills? This could save the world a chain of inhalers that would go over up to six times around the globe each year. Two and a half billion inhalers that do not need to be produced. Packed. Shipped. Used and thrown away. this point of time, not all COPD patients use a reusable inhaler. So, we will probably not manage to go around the globe any day soon. Nevertheless, change is happening. Refill after refill. Less waste, smaller footprint. Beringer Ingelheim. Value through innovation. The reduction of the carbon footprint has been with us already for a long time. So um, already in 1990, Böhring Ingelheim fired the first patents of the MDIs using HFA. And uh, in 2003, we uh, introduced the Respi Mart, we use, uh, the Respi Mart a soft mist inhaler. And for us, the new Respi Mart reusable is the next logical step to support global environmental initiatives. So value through innovation, that is our guiding principle, or that's a guiding principle for us at Beringer Ingelheim. That means we focus on the patients and on the environment. So the triad of performance, sustainability, and usability that's what drives us in our design process and also has driven us in the design process for the new recipe mart reusable. We saw it already in the movie, so we maintain a high quality and performance. So with a high fine particle fraction and robust dosing, with the effective drug delivery to the lung, with the soft mist inhalation, we, the device is reusable, up to six cartridges, and we reduce the environmental impact of smaller packages, packaging, less energy, less transport, and less storage capacity. And finally, we took the feedback from our patients into the design, and we improved the handling. For example, it's easier for them to assemble the device, and also has a better grip for the handling. And we de redesigned the um, counter, dose and counter, um, so uh, it's easier to read for the patients. So, and I think all the three components together make the recipe mart reusable very special and unique and provides a big contribution to our environment. 
Thank you very much. Are there any questions? So it's uh, 37 ton tons. It, it couldn't could be more, so we 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 made uh, or we we made studies, and it could be up to nine or ten, but we uh, make it a little bit safer, so that we said okay, it's up to six, so we regis uh, registered for six, and uh, it's um, the limited factor is for us the yeah it's the design factor, it's uh, the nozzle design. Um, it, it, it could be there uh, that we are have clogging problems but uh, so we uh, there's no potential but we limited is to be on the safe side. Thank you. Okay, so we continue. So next we know it's Utamaki, flexible packaging. Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am happy to introduce you um, PushTap. My name is Fabio Daidone. I'm the project lead of PushTap. What is PushTap? That's a big question. <laughs> PushTap is a strip pack technology where you could push the tablet through instead of tearing it. So you easily push it through. And um, so th therefore it becomes a nice alternative to blister or cold form application. <sighs> we won the award for this PushTaps here last year. But what happened? until last year, since last year, we made push tip recyclable. So, and this is a big jump, I think, also for the industry. We are the ones who have a strip pack packaging to be pushed through and it is recyclable, yeah? I will show you some benefits in general of push tap and as well as for this push tap loop, our recyclable packaging. So, th there are some, um, some material examples, so please concentrate on the right hand side. We have it on a polyolefin base. Polyolefin base may, means a, picture, uh, a mixture of OPPPE, and therefore it is recyclable into the polyolefin stream. Um, everybody, or mostly the, uh, the industry, knows the strip pack packaging. With the standard push tap, we reach a very high water vapor transmission rates. And today I want more to concentrate on push tab loop. So with that, with that uh, specification we have currently, we reach a standard PVC blister water vapor transmission rate at the moment. Our next step will be to have a barrier and still recyclable, this is important. Our next step will be to have a barrier inside and we want to reach uh, a water vapor transmission rate by 0.1. So this is our task uh, to have material ready by quarter two. Moreover, of course, uh, we, as we have less weight, so we are talking about uh, <coughs> 70 micron thick laminate on each side. Of course, there's a material cost uh, compared to the standard blister and cold foil applications. 
And beside the material savings, you reduce complexity. For example, you could use one material for different applications, yeah, meaning for different climate zones. Um, your setup time on the machines, you take a different application, have the same material on the machine. This is a big advantage. And also in regards of sealing tools. So we had a, a request from a customer. He had 100 different tablet sizes. That means currently he needs to have 100 different blister tooling. And uh, with our machine uh, supplier and partner, Romaco, we did the task. And they found out that if we combine the tablet sizes for the toolings, we could reduce it to 10 to 15 ceiling tools. So it's a huge reduction of complexity. And uh, with this combination, it becomes also attractive in, in terms of production. Of course, we have the possibility to print on it. You see on the back side, on the inside, on the outside. So here we did um, the perforation to push it out on the transparent side. That means the back side is still undestroyed. That means you could still read your instructions, whatever you want to communicate with your customer. And it could differentiate your product by giving them shapes. Yeah, also a good opportunity. And um, as we could adapt the force you need to push the tablet through, you could provide CRSF through this product. And of course, and this is what we want to point out, of none of these applications or none of these push tab family members, let's say, we have no PVC in it. And, um, Push tab loop, as I have mentioned, is really recyclable because it's up above 90% of polyolefin structure. And here you see the blue ones on the bottom. This is where we are currently with push tab loop, and this is where we want to reach with the push tab loop barrier. So it's around about 0 point, uh, 0 0.1. And we want to invite everybody to be the first to be a pioneer and join us on the way of our sustainable future of packaging. You are hardly invited, and we could discuss further on our stand D30. Thank you very much. Are there any questions so far? Yeah, please. So um, <clears throat> perhaps you might know Hutamaki has also a big footprint in food industry. So we are side by side with our food colleagues and they did this, uh, this uh, task already. So we are working, to, uh, we are working together with HTP Cyclos uh, and he's, uh, or they are providing certificates and uh, we are currently on the way to certificate push tab loop and then uh, we will see what is uh, the outcome on that. Um, but we expect to be above uh, 95 percent, and this is this is our our aim in all the projects we have for uh, recycling and sustainability. Yeah. Just uh, to complete this, it can be used with all sort of taps, caps, fizzy. <laughs> So it's, it's depending uh, how um, hard or stiff the tablets or capsules are. So we had uh, several projects with uh, capsules and this was working. It's depending on how stiff the cap uh, tablets or the capsules are to push them out. Okay, But in general, on the machine, of course, all kind of tablets, capsules, evanescence could run. Yeah. Was, was it answering your question? Are you happy? <laughs> Good. Thank you very much. Okay, no more questions. We are moving to the next best innovation, which is not for solid dosage, but for liquid dosage. And we will have a presentation of uh, Paxis. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we are very proud that we have won the uh, packaging award for the liquid dosage. Um, 
We are a very small company located in south of Germany, Paxis. My name is Eike Hoffmann and um, I'm responsible for the, uh, I'm the managing director and responsible for sales and marketing. Okay, closer? Okay, ah, okay. Now you, you, you listen. Pardon? Ah, not, okay, thanks. Okay, uh, I have also the, uh, the innovation with me, so I would like you to test the innovation and then you can give me a feedback afterwards if everything is running well. So um, this is a liquid pour, we call it Lotus. And uh, just to show you, there is, uh, okay, it's helpful. You just have to um, yeah, pour out the liquid and then you see the last drop will always go back inside the bottle. So um, this will avoid to have the uh, dirt and uh, uh, let's say the dirt on the label, the dirt on the bottle, the oily liquid on the bottle or on the table itself. So uh, if, you, if you don't mind, test it. You don't need to test it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can also do it without the microphone maybe. <laughs> uh, so just try it. Okay, uh, the reason is why why we have developed this uh, kind of innovation. We went with a customer into a restaurant. It happens every time. It happens every time. Yes. <laughs> we tried a couple of times trying to find the, the drop here. No chance. Yeah, but please but give it, fun. yeah, <laughs> move it around. So I guess all of you have experienced it in a restaurant or at home. Uh, and we have, um, we had one customer who was saying, okay, we have an issue with um, a liquid uh, with uh, yeast. And uh, if bacteria are coming to the liquid itself, then it might happen that the formulation is getting um, infected and then the bottles are exploding. So this was the challenge. Or the, the, the challenge was to put back the, uh, the uh, liquid so that it goes back into the bottle and um, for sure that the uh, infection of the germs are not, uh, are not happening anymore. Okay. So this is something what is on the market. So normally we are doing a market evaluation before. Um, and all of these products, they have this issue and uh, the room for improvement is clearly that we uh, that it should be clean and easy to pour uh, as well as a one hand application so this is always our approach we just would like to make the um, primary packaging a little bit more easy to use should be very pragmatic to use and we also has an uh, have an aesthetic uh, approach so it looks should look nice is also important. Yeah, for the pharmaceutical market, sometimes not so easy. Okay, and you see here, this is the outcome. Unfortunately, we have the wrong presentation with me, but it's, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, so one piece system, this was uh, one challenge. You see this is a flip top cap, and we have two temper evident uh, features, one for the flip top, as well as for the uh, cap itself. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> we have now invested in a uh, one cavity tool. Samples are now available and uh, the commercial availability will uh, start in October when the eight cavity tool is, uh, is ready. Yeah. Okay, it's, very, yeah, it's easy to fill, so we always also look on the filling uh, process, so you normally use a standard bottle. You just fill it in and then you uh, screw on the cap. And this is now the effect. And the challenging part was for sure this kind of edge. You see here the tier of edge. And this uh, took us the most time to develop this tier of edge. We thought at the beginning it must be very sharp, but it's right the opposite, and it took us a long, long time to find out. 
but finally, uh, yeah, we think that we have done a good job. <laughs> and uh, we hope that this product uh, will be developed in a, in a very nice way in the market. Yeah. So that's at the end of the day, that's it. Uh, you have a lot of different applications where we can use the product in the pharmacy, also in the food industry. So it's a broad, broad range. We have a lot of inquiries already. So uh, we hope that the, that the first tool is sold out in the next few months, so right before the production. And uh, yeah, it's our second innovation. We had won the German packaging award for a mini pill dispenser or a globally dispenser. And this is now the second one. And yeah, we are very proud and that's, that's it. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Yes, you can. So the, the end customer could reuse it, yes. So if you, yeah. Yeah, okay. If, you can you can do it if you if you uh, if you use it for oils, yeah. Then you can use it for pharmaceuticals. I would not recommend. Okay. Uh, do you sell such caps uh, at the exhibition? Can you buy it now? <laughs> you can. <laughs> you can buy it if you if you. But we will not be uh, ready for commercial quantities in the, uh, before October. For home use. Uh, <laughs> if you, if you, if you give me, I will send you some samples with a bottle. Yeah, yeah, you will, you will, you will enjoy it. Yeah, so there will no oil anymore on your on your table. Yeah. Yes, this is fired. Okay, I've got the microphone. Huh? Ooh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a bottle for me as well? Oh, no. <laughs> With whiskey. But a serious question. So, um, interested. It was nice as well. Uh, is it also depending on the material? Because when we studied physical chemistry, like when we were young, we studied physical chemistry and then you had the size of the droplet, which is the Oberflachenspannung. Yeah. You know? So, can you do it with another material as well, or do you have a surface treatment to make it sort of, uh, no. or is it just stupid polymer? It's just stupid polymer. Oh, but so, uh, so that you are very clever. Thi <laughs> <laughs> this is, <laughs> yeah, we we try to keep it very simple. In <laughs> fact, yeah, we have done a lot of, uh, yeah, okay, with uh, with all this drop size, uh, you you can do a lot yeah. also with the laser technology, but this is not needed here. Yeah, cool. Yeah. It's very simple. Thank you. It's a simple and pragmatic innovation. Cool. Yeah. Any more questions? No? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. That's a good example of design usability. You have a problem and you find a solution easy. Great. Nice product. So we are moving to the next Top, and we are now arriving on the system which is for secondary packaging. And we will have here a presentation of also very nice product. All okay. the price and nice product this yep. year. Thank you. Thank you very much to get the possibility, um, maybe I can. Ah, yeah. Uh, to introduce uh, our patient support app and augmented reality app. And a warm welcome to the audience. My name is Mike Bernhardt. I'm the uh, product manager of Rondo. We are, so are you able to hear me? Yeah. Okay. So um, we are based on the secondary packaging um, business. And first of all, I would thank you the team which was developed um, this app. One of our colleagues is sitting over there. Um, he's done the, um, <coughs> the broker on um, part of the program and part of the software. And okay. So first of all, the aim of the project was to, to make the patient's life easier. Estimation shows that every fourth hospitalization is connected with the wrong medication. 
So that based on non or partial compliant uh, patient. What does compliance mean? In this case, it means willing to take the medicine in the right place at the right time and at the right dose. With our, with our app, we would like to reach the partial compliance patient. They are willing to take the medicine, but sometimes they forget to take the medicine. So we are not able to, to reach non-compliant because they don't want to take, or you, we don't need to, to reach the compliant because they uh, take the medicine in the right time and the right dose. Um, <coughs> with a smartphone tablet or a normal tablet, the, the patient can scan the packaging of the medicine. A hidden marker leads him to, st to the starting screen. You can see it over there uh, of the app. An artboard change is not required. So our customer can use the current artwork. So maybe we um, have linked a small video. Maybe you can show the video. Is it working? Yeah. So you, you see, you have the package. The software scan the package. There are some hidden markers um, on the surface. And you can find some, okay. you can find different kinds of function. So at the starting, the patient can see several functions, like the pillbox function. This is a possibility where he can send a reminder that he has to take the medicine every day, maybe at 10 a.m. Some medications require the right handling. So that, <laughs> that means to keep refrigerated the medicine or disinfected the skin. Therefore, the patient can watch an um, instruction movie linked with the app. Maybe it happened that the leaflet is lost. After opening the package, our patient is not able to read the leaflet. <coughs> In case of this, the patient can find the digital version of the leaflet as a PDF. The text-to-speech function will support the patient uh, with a handicap, maybe for blind patient or people who are not able uh, to read uh, the leaflet anymore. The patient app will be linked between, or there will be a link between the analog and the digital world of the packaging in the pharmaceutical industry and simplifies the life of the patient. So, if you have some, if have some, more, uh, some question about this, maybe we have the time now. Or for further information, you can visit us at the booth or to contact us by email. Thank you for your attention. Okay. So ne next innovation is related to machinery. So um, uh, do we have smart skins technologies? Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Evan Justison. I'm the CEO of Smart Skin Technologies and uh, first just say uh, thanks for being here. I think I'm uh, closing the show down and I was worried I'd be talking to the birds. So, <laughs> um, um, uh, the way to advance the presentations here. Okay. So, uh, Smart Skin is a uh, Canadian company. We have our roots in the, actually, the beverage industry was started 10 years ago by a Sri Lankan immigrant to Canada. Uh, he invented a uh, nanomaterial which allowed him to set, uh, sense pressure um, applied to like a fabric type material. And uh, after trying a few businesses, he, he ended up uh, helping uh, Coca-Cola solve breakage issues on their bottling lines. And um, he did that for a few years and grew quite successful. But um, well, three years ago, he was approached by um, an engineer at Roche who was trying to solve a complex um, breakage issue they were having and asked him to do a, 
custom project to scale that same beverage industry technology to the size of a pharmaceutical container. And uh, after working with them for a few years, we thought we had something pretty good and, and they became an early adopter customer. And uh, we formed a partnership with Shot uh, a year and a half ago and they've since been helping us to introduce this to the uh, pharmaceutical industry. Um, so so we, we think what we have here is a, we call it a fill and finish game changer. The way this product works is we make replicas. I have a, an actual prop here just brought to see. This is a 1ml pre-filled syringe. Uh, we'll make a replica of, of your container, whatever size or shape it is. And uh, we, we outfit it with uh, pressure sensitive material. Uh, we incorporate an accelerometer, uh, batteries. And, uh, and it works by, this replica works by communicating data to a, uh, via Bluetooth to a computer about the forces that are be experienced that it experiences as it traverses the filling line. So we put our, we put it right in with the nested vials and we let it run through the equipment. It's precise enough it can go through labeling machines or cappers. And what we do is we develop this uh, kind of high level picture, uh, like a heat map of the forces that are being exerted on the container as it goes through. So you can really quickly see where the areas of interest might be. And then um, you, can, you can dive in in some great detail and we can actually record exactly not just like where on your line pressure is being uh, applied but, but also where specifically on that container. So you might have a problem where you have a scratch um, in let's say you're, you're trying to find the root cause of a scratch at the, on the shoulder of your vial. Well we can run this through the process and we can specifically look for pressure that was applied right there where you're seeing the scratch. So it's a way to, um, you, know, it's, you know, you take these capabilities, we, we've seen customers uh, reduce glass imperfections by 60 to 80 percent easily. Um, it's a great way to validate your equipment setups. So if you're doing a changeover or you've done maintenance on a labeling machine or something, you can really quickly run this through and you can check whether the trunnion wheels are set in a way that they're going to damage that container. Um, it's also a great tool for training operators. You'll often see like people feeding vials, one operator does it slightly different than another and you might have a standard process but they think their way is just fine until you actually measure it and then you can say you know your way is exerting more force on the container than, than the other person's is. Um, it's used as a tool in investigations, you know when a big investigation does come up it's a way we can really quickly isolate, um, you know, where problem areas worth focusing on might be. But I'd say the biggest, you know, one of the biggest benefits is um, you're going to have a lot less investigations if you deal with this uh, preventatively. And our customers, uh, so um, Novo Nordisk is uh, one of our customers. They did a presentation, a public uh, presentation at the PDA a while back, and they reduced their imperfections greatly. Um, but, but the most, uh, the greatest ROI was they went from nine in quality investigations in one year to zero the next. And that got everyone to more soccer games on top of the dollars saved. Um, and that's a good engineering validation tool. If you do make a change to the line, you can use it to validate whether or not it's, um, that change had the effect you thought. Um, so here's just an example. Uh, it's a video. So this is the drone going through, a, we call it a drone, a sensor drone. It's going through the labeling machine right here. And what you're going to see is it's going to light up with color as it goes through the trunnion wheels. You see it, it just lit up with color. Um, so that made a, our maximum sensor range was actually exceeded in this video. And uh, what we found is there was an overly tight trunnion in this adjustment. So this video, you're going to see it again here. It's going to come. You're going to see this big pressure spike which we measure, and it's going to stop right here. We're going to reverse it, I think. And then you can come back and you can see that that pressure was exerted all over. So I know it's, it's not an alignment issue of the trunnion. I know those trunnions are too close together, and, it's, and that's the result. So um, we made a small adjustment. Half a turn of a screwdriver is often what this is. No one can see this. It's, we're talking about a millimeter, a half a millimeter of difference and that pressure spike's gone away. You'll see there's enough pressure to apply the label, but it's not enough to damage the container. So that's a, a you know, fairly straightforward example of how this device can be used. Um, this is an example one of our customers presented at Janssen. They began a program with us 
I think this was a clinical trial line they were having uh, some, some issues with. And over a period of time, they, they were averaging 2.46% in, 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 in defect. And over a series of, you know, they had to implement a program, learn how to use this and make changes, but they're now down to 0.77%. Again, their quality investigations have, have, have gone to zero in the same time period. So we think there's a really stellar um, return on investment with this technology. Admittedly, it's not just technology, it's, it's, you know, you really have to get organized in terms, it's new, like often we, you know, the first conversation with a customer will be what department does this even fit in, and this is not, not standard process today. But when, when they do apply it, um, they get great results. Um, so just to share with you a bit of our technology, as I said, we started out, you know, in beer bottling. We've actually been awarded uh, Coca-Cola as a supplier of the year two, two consecutive years in a row. It's the first time that's ever happened. And uh, we, we've uh, now kind of just, say, just recently d developed a full suite of sensors where we can do the smallest syringes, we can do tip and flange sensing. We also do devices like pens or auto injectors. Um, um, and they'll also take these uh, containers, like you might take that and insert it into an auto injector and you can measure whether as it's going together, whether it's exerting adverse forces um, on, your, on your syringe. Um, which, uh, by the way, we find it, it does, it's a problem. Uh, a lot of the machinery that puts the parts together can exert torsional forces on the containers inside and you never see it until a patient goes to use it and it doesn't work. Um, and a little bit about the company, um, we have a fairly global footprint now. It's not large offices, but we have technical people stationed pretty much all over the world. And through our partnership with SHOT, um, we like when we come in to do a project, we can look at, you know, maybe our sensor is the right solution for you, or maybe it's uh, some of uh, SHOT's more advanced products, like, for example, their Everick line of containers, which is a uh, slight, slight improvement on the traditional borosilicate product. And that might be what's right for you, too. So uh, we work together closely with, with them uh, when, when customers have issues, they tend to send them our way and, and vice versa. Um, so with that, uh, that's a quick introduction to SmartSkin and the Quantifield system. I hope you enjoyed it, um, and I hope to hear from you all again. Happy to take a few questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations again. So we are moving to our winner in Best Innovation in Injectable Drug Delivery. And it's a pleasure to welcome John Mary and to have a presentation of a credence, which have a nice, very nice idea and prize a few years ago. And that show us how a very nice product can evolve in the way to become a digital, very nice product. Thanks, Pascal. I I think this is on, so how do I turn this off so we don't... Thanks, David. You can hear me okay? I think it's been a good conference because I'm losing my voice, so it must, <laughs> it must be a good conference. I don't want to get too close to the, the speakers. Thank you, Pascal and David. Thank you. So as Pascal mentioned, we were benefits of the uh, Innovation Award in our first PharmaPAC conference five years ago, 2015, so it's great to be back. And I want to reiterate what I said yesterday, which is the PharmaPAC support team is fantastic, and we really appreciate all that you guys do. So I'm going to tell you really quickly just a brief overview of our product lines. You see a bunch of syringe-based delivery systems, and our core premise here is to take a container from anyone that's existing and do things to it, add on to it, to make it a delivery system that has benefits to the user, benefits to pharma, whether it's safety or usability or ease of use, um, or for pharma, the uh, ability to use existing and validated primary package components and maintain their filling processes. So we call it innovation without change, and it's our attempt to, as I mentioned yesterday, um, innovate implementable technology, commercial, commercializable technology. So let's talk about why we're here, the Credence Connect. It's the Credence Connect auto sensing system. And I, I meant to come up when I got here first to say, Evan, I think your technology is fantastic. So congratulations. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. It's one of the benefits of being in the innovation forum. You see all these great things. So 
fantastic. We're um, making a connection from the use of a syringe to the ecosystem. And I mean pharma and payers and clinical service uh, providers, CROs, um, maybe even technology providers and AI algorithms. So capture the information in a way that the user uh, is unobstructed, it's, it's automatic, it provides feedback to the user to improve their experience, improve the likelihood of a proper injection. And then what you do with that information, there are many, many examples and many new innovative models that exist. How did we come up with it? You know, one thing our company does well is look and understand white space. And so connectivity is obviously very hot. But what has been missing is, is a few different elements. One is universal applicability to syringes. So we demonstrate today and over the conference on our companion needle retraction system, but it's applicable to any syringe, okay? And it's a very simple scalable technology in that we are measuring distance traveled by the plunger rod and extrapolating volume. And because of that, we can give the user volume injected as long as we know going in the size of the barrel and the fill volume. And so there was this white space around syringes and around universal applicability that we said, okay, what can we do? How can we add value? So I'm going to go through this very quickly because I think the video is more interesting. But we've tied it into our app as a demonstration forum, and certainly our app is one avenue. But our model is open, which means if Pharma, who is our primary client here, wants to use it with their app or their background and data management system, no problem. We can tie into that. The key differentiator here is real-time feedback. So again, the video will be more powerful, but as I progress down the syringe as an injector, you can watch the injected volume increase and you're told immediately, immediately upon use, was it a proper injection or an improper injection? We're constantly trying to look for ways to communicate with the user. So it's a reusable flange. Why? Certainly environmental sustainability, and, co and cost containment, right? We think about total cost. So it's a reusable device. The user wants to put it on because what it gives to the user is a comfortable, ergonomic advantaged injection system, which they want anyway. So compare the usability of a finger flange to a syringe without it. They're putting on the finger flange and when they put that on, they get the connectivity for free, right? We're not asking them to put an add-on device, we're asking them to attach a flange that they need to attach anyway. So, I think the next one is the video, great. This is really where is, is the most interesting. The user will get a reminder on the app, all right? Time to take your medication, they'll touch the screen, okay? They'll be prompted after getting through some inf uh, informed consent, privacy, they're prompted to attach the connect and you'll see the bar on the, on the app goes green telling the user you've attached properly, okay? Instructions for use, guidance to enable a proper injection. In this case, take the needle shield off, insert the needle and inject. Now, watch what happens on the injected volume as the user injects and when the user stops injecting, right? If they inject, it counts. If they stop, it stops counting. When they start again, it counts the injected volume. And then once, once it's timed out, it will tell you, yes, proper injection. Had the user not injected the one mil there, when the timeout happened, which I think in this case is 15 seconds, they would receive an X that says it wasn't done properly. And then in the dose history that you just saw, you'd see either proper injection or improper injection. So where do we go with this? Why is it important? It's important probably in the immediate short term to enable informed safety and efficacy um, data in your clinical applications, okay? So if, if a farmer can know whether their patient or their clinical subject has injected properly according to the dose regimen or not, they can have informed inclusion, exclusion criteria discussions with regulatory bodies. So their data is more robust and it's done by remote sensing. So it also drives down the CRO costs associated with all the monitoring and the paperwork. Beyond that, I think there are commercial values here. 
A lot of people in the industry are talking about adherence. It's an important thing, but it's a long-term return on investment because you have to demonstrate that improved adherence leads to economic benefit. We believe that understanding the actual patient use pattern and the relationship they have with their medicine is extremely important for pharma. And we also believe that this can enable, can enable, depending on pharma strategy, direct messaging to a cohort of users that have a similar morbidity profile, which can go a variety of ways in terms of improving education, providing guidance, and potentially cross-marketing of other medications. So we think there are very tangible benefits through the supply chain, business models that really have not been explored yet, but we've got a lot of work to do. We introduced it here. It's a pleasure to win this award. We're so proud. Um, but we're really looking for um, the right relationship with pharma to advance this development because so much and many of the design input requirements are still being defined, and they need to be defined in hand with pharma. Um, so probably where we will go is end up having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a farmer for a period of time, and then uh, in time making it more widely available. So we're a collaborator. We need technologies in, in the supply chain. Um, I think there are ways that Evans Technology can help us with some other things, but certainly electronics providers and things like that will be useful. So thank you. I appreciate everyone's attention, and uh, it's been a great conference, and I'm happy to answer any questions, of course. And thank you to Stefan for allowing me to insert the video at the very last minute. I <laughs> appreciate it. Any questions, guys? Okay. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Okay. So to conclude this session, so um, we are uh, calling uh, Nemera. Thank you. Shall I use that? So um, last but not least presentation of the day. So hopefully you still have some energy to, to listen to, uh, to this talk. Um, uh, so we are very proud to receive uh, uh, the Pharmapack Award for the Safe and Spray, which I will uh, detail uh, later on. Uh, but maybe, why is it? There's probably a problem here. Yes. Um, so just a few words on Nimira and who we are uh, before presenting the Safe and Spray um, Winner Award. So Nimira is a company uh, who develops and manufactures drug delivery device uh, dedicated to the pharma industry. Uh, and our teams strive uh, to do that every day to improve patients' lives. This is really in our core DNA, and this is also why um, we put a strong patient focus in our developments. So, maybe just um, uh, a few words about the why Safe and Spray. Uh, basically, to answer unmet market needs. In particular, um, regarding drug abuse. You probably know uh, and are aware about the healthcare crisis in the US about opioid overdoses uh, through prescription products. Uh, so the World Health Organization, um, let's say, attribute uh, a lot of overdose death due to opioid overdose. And this is why um, uh, I've taken some of the prevention measures for opioid overdose uh, recommended by the World, um, World Healthcare Organization. I don't know what's happening, but the, the slides are just running and running, <laughs> and I don't do anything. Um, so uh, basically, what's uh, important here is that they recommend we monitor the drug 
uh, delivered to the patients, uh, and especially with uh, a dispensing system uh, appropriate for that. So the World Healthcare Organization recommends um, measures to reduce the risk uh, of misuse of opioids, including um, careful uh, patient selection, but also supervising dosing uh, where necessary. And this is why we developed the Safe and Spray, which is a device with locking features which prevents any overdosing from uh, the patient perspective. So this is really a device which was developed for ensuring patient safety. So, um, maybe so that you are aware about what Safe and Spray is, what are the functionalities, how it works, uh, I will uh, show you a little video. Maybe if you can launch the video, please. So now you have a better idea of what the safe and spray is, um, how it works and the different functionalities. So what is safe and spray in a nutshell? Uh, well, in terms of patient benefits, this is really to make sure, again, to guarantee and monitor the dose delivered to the patient to make sure that there's no overdosing. Um, so this is the very first one, and for sure it doesn't apply to all drugs, but uh, to potent drugs, um, so opioids is a good example. Uh, then it's uh, really intuitive in terms of patient usage uh, with a very um, smart fingerprint identification. So you have a unique uh, patient identification with the device uh, and it also acts as a smart child resistant function. A very simple display with basic information in it, so very easy. Number uh, of doses left uh, in the system. Uh, the remaining time before the next dose to be delivered. 
Um, but also, as you could see in the video, a feedback about how the patient uses it. So for instance, if the patient is using it upside down, the system's locked automatically because the full dose cannot be delivered properly. And it will feed back the patient about the wrong uh, angle of use of the product. So then it's good because we are sure that the device will be used in a proper way uh, for the patient to get the full dose. In terms of what's innovative uh, in Safe and Spray, uh, Basically, our philosophy at Nimera with electronics when developing drug delivery devices is either to develop um, add-ons to existing uh, delivery systems or uh, to, uh, let's say, uh, integrate devices with a reusable part. And this is um, exactly what Safe and Spray is. You have an integrated part with um, uh, the drug container with the spray part here, and so if you see the pointer, uh, which is the spray part, and you have, let's say, the intelligent part with most electronics in it, which is the safe part. Um, so this is really delivered in two parts. What's interesting here is that it does not change anything in terms of filling line because you have your drug uh, filled in uh, the usual way, um, and, in, and it's only embedded in the safe and spray at the end of the filling process. Uh, again, a very smart uh, fingerprint sensor for a patient's unique identification and as a smart uh, child resistant function. Very simple display, again, with very basic information uh, to guide the patient through uh, the device. And also, last but not least, um, you have relevant data available uh, through Inimera cloud system. So it's mainly for healthcare professionals, uh, for instance, at the pharmacist level, to set up the parameters of uh, the device. So remotely, healthcare professionals can adjust the setting parameters according to each patient, according to each prescription. So this is something which is really also interesting. And maybe a last slide just to give some figures about Safe and Spray. Uh, so Safe and Spray uh, was uh, developed very rapidly. It's a concept device. Uh, it was um, uh, developed by seven people full time um, within the core team. Uh, then six months of development for this concept device. Uh, we have developed 10 functional um, concept devices and we have filed four patents. Uh, one of the patents is about uh, orientation locking feature before dose delivery so that the system can detect where, uh, um, what is the good angle of use for the device uh, to get uh, the drug delivered. And it's quite smart and, and intelligent because it's not only about angle, but also about uh, the drug remaining inside uh, the container. So thank you again for um, you know, receiving this award. Um, it's a great honor for us and uh, we have uh, our booth uh, available if you want to have more details about uh, Safe and Spray. <laughs> Do you have any questions? No, it's end of the day. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Congratulations to all the exhibitors, all the winners. That was a fantastic 2020 PharmaPack. Once again, well organized and that present so nice product. Uh, I thank you for your kind attention, for being here to this last session and just uh, hand in, see you maybe next year and just to have some free time to see again this wonderful world of product. Thank you. Mm -hmm.